Hi, thank you for joining us for Loving the Artist Within. As you can tell, we have a new look and a new home. I have finally combined my two passions, facilitate the healing with Flatbread Media to announce Flatbread for Life. Igniting your superpower, creating change, and transforming lives. Thank you for joining us for Loving the Artist Within. Today, we have Shane Maynard. She is an award-winning poet, an author, a creative coach, and also the founder of Gorilla Poets, to name a few. We're gonna find out during this episode, it was too good to keep into one, so we made three. What are the ways that we could help? With COVID and everything that's happening right now, we gotta give back in some way. With her activism, she tells us why and how to create lasting change. And it might not be what you think. Well, I am so excited, Shane, to have you on Loving the Artist Within series this week. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here too. I think um, I was talking about how beautiful the interviews are, so it's an honor to be here today. So I'm a creative coach, I'm a spoken word artist, uh, I'm also a live painter and a, a visual artist, and I also work a lot with teens, so a big passion of mine is working with uh, teens and youth that have behavioral health challenges, and uh, yeah, I just love to create and do art I've been and writing, I've been doing it since I was little, so I'm very blessed that I actually get to do it for a living, so. Yes, that's always good when our passions um, meet our purpose and then we're able to just dive right in. So tell us a little bit about, um, like, what are some of the challenges that um, you had to overcome? I, I experienced a lot of trauma. So I was, I was writing and doing art at a very early age. And there was never this idea that like, oh, it had to come out perfect because I was doing it for survival. So I never really had a challenge with perfectionism, but my challenges were definitely personal. I think that anybody who does any kind of creative journey, whether even if that's entrepreneurship, you're also going to be on a life journey because you can't move forward if you don't address things that are inside of you that are keeping you stuck. So trying to understand why I was, I was struggling so much mentally and what I needed to do to get through that, um, because I do believe that, that writing and, and art and all art forms really help and they, they do save lives. And there needs to be other tools that you, that you have in your toolkit, you know, to help you heal and to grow. And I, I learned that very early on uh, because I was writing and doing art constantly, but I still was self-harming. You know, I still had many suicide attempts. Uh, so I knew that I needed something else. I just didn't know what that was. Uh, so my, my struggles have been, you know, just dealing with what I was going through. And then when I got older, the struggle was now, what do I do with it? <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, and how do you how do you get your voice out there so that you know you can make an impact or even just get even more free by expressing it? It's almost like confession. You know, it's one thing to write a poem on a page; it's another to speak it out loud to to witnesses. You know, and and really feel free from it. Uh, I think the hardest part for me was was just I, I guess navigating that and not having a mentor really by the time I got to the point where I was old enough to go out to places and start sharing, I had to find my mentors. I had to cultivate them myself. I didn't have somebody guiding me along every step of the way. I had a lot of supportive teachers, had a lot of supportive, you know, uh, people who, who knew about art and all all types of art, but I didn't really have that one person like, oh, I'm going to take you to this place. And 
introduce you to this person. And so I had to kind of navigate that. So that was definitely a challenge. (laughs) What an amazing story. And so much that you had to overcome. And I can actually see based on your journey, why you do what you do now. Um, Mm -hmm. It's like you're providing that mentorship to others um, and really getting out there as a creative coach, helping people kind of navigate those waters um, for themselves. So that's amazing. So did that influence your um, activism and working with teenagers? Yeah, it's funny because when I was a teen, which is when I was doing the majority of my writing, because that was when I was very mentally unstable. I was in a very, very bad place. Um, my father had just died and it was, it was sudden. It was, it was really bad. Um, so I was writing constantly. Like I even remember like when classes would switch, I would have a piece of paper on the wall and and I would be writing a poem on my way to the next class. Like I, uh, I remember, I remember that. And I didn't know at the time that this is what I would be doing. Like, I didn't know at the time that I would be, you know, on stage or, you know, have books out and things like that. But I did know that I wanted to work with teens, even as a teenager, because I wasn't getting the help I needed. It was either punishment or, you know, if, if I was acting out, which I did a lot, if I was acting out, um, or becoming violent, whether to myself or other people, no one ever asked the question, like, are you, are you okay? Like, do you, do you, what do you need? Can we get you some help? And it was either like, I was brushed off. Like, we're just going to ignore that you have an issue so we don't want to admit something's wrong and we don't even know how to help you even if we did or it was you're bad we're going to punish you kind of thing so i knew the need i i had so many friends that were also you know severely suicidal self harmed i i knew the need and i i promised myself i was like i if i do live because i was completely convinced I wouldn't even make it to 18. And then when I was 18, I was like, there's no way I'm making it to 21. And here I am 36. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I was like, I, I, if I make it, if I survive, I want to work with teens. So that was something that was always in my heart. I, I knew that, but I had no idea that I didn't even know poetry and art would be involved in that. So it's really beautiful to see how the journey unfolded. And I run a nonprofit called Gorilla Poets and what got me started into really finding that avenue of, of working with teens and, and adults to uh, incorporating art and poetry into personal development. I, it was in 2012 and I had shared a poem at an open mic and a elderly man had walked up and said that that poem saved his life. Like he was going to go home that night and, and, you know, commit suicide. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, wow. So not only does, does it heal me and help me, but by sharing my story, it can help others. And then I was just on fire. I was like, it was like confirmation. It was like, yes, this, this is needed. That's when I started the Gorilla Poets and we got involved in school systems and everything else. And like, anytime you're working with somebody in an artistic way, there's always there's this little holy moment that happens, but you gotta, you gotta be looking for it sometimes. Like sometimes it's as profound as, you know, the man coming up and being very direct about it. But other times it's like, you know, seeing, seeing shoulders relax in a classroom when someone's drawing or writing or seeing someone, you know, the spark of joy in their face when like they really like what they wrote or, you know, realizing that they're, they can rewrite their own narrative. It doesn't have to be like um, chained to their past or whatever, you know, someone else has tried to tell them their story is. So I feel like those moments I've, I've been very blessed to be able to see and that has really kept me going and keeps me going still to this day of just seeing the proof that like the world needs this. And yeah. I love that. Tell me about your activism. Why do you do it? How can people help? 
Um, why is it important, especially now? With everything going on in the world, I'll start there. Uh, these issues that are, are coming to the forefront have, have been issues that have existed for li literally ever since America was even founded. And that's the reason why, you know, it's like enough is enough. Uh, but I think people who want to get involved and they feel like they, they feel like if they're not out joining the protests, if they're not out doing this huge self-sacrifice thing, that they're not doing their part. I, what I would really love people to know is that it, it doesn't have to be that, like it, it can be so simple so simple and in just how you intentionally live your life every day and intentionally stand up and speak your voice when you do see injustice or when someone needs help and and not doubting yourself like oh well i i'm not i'm not worthy enough to help them or my experience my past experience won't be able to help them but actually like putting your your stuff aside and just being able to to be present with someone when we talk about activism i think people think that it's like you know joan of arc out there just you know and that's a that's a level of it but there are other levels that are very needed like i think if you're doing any type of internal work you're self-reflecting you're thinking about your own biases you're thinking about you know uh, the hard conversations that you can be having with family members or with friends or, you know, um, how can you support um, black owned businesses, things like that. That matters. We need that too. I always tell people, if you are upset about life or you are feeling hopeless, you need to get hands on in the community because you will no longer be like, if you are out helping and being of service to people, you will be able to see such beautiful things that your heart will get so full that you'll you won't you won't have that dark outlook and you will feel like you're a part of something and i think on a individual level that's why activism is important on a on a macro level uh it's going to take generations no matter what the issue is whether it's climate change whether it's economy whether it's racism whether no matter what it is is not something that happens overnight it takes generations of of people actively intentionally um doing something or saying something uh to make that change happen uh and it wouldn't i used to get really upset as an activist because i would see activists out there dedicating their entire lives and and just not having a, a, their own, like not having their own life, because there wasn't enough people out there to to do what they were trying to do. And I feel like, especially right now, there is a huge potential and a huge a, ability for that to change, so that the people who who are out there making lifelong sacrifices, like sacrifices that are, are just incredible to, for change, won't have to do that if we all did something, you know what I mean? And I think that we have that opportunity right now as people are starting to realize, oh, I do have power to make a change. And I think that, absolutely, honestly honestly believe that in five to ten years i think we're going to see a different america i really do i really do and i'm 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 holding on to that i really am i, I really am and but we have to keep going oh yeah i i completely agree with you like i i told somebody this on a um open mic on instagram because there's been a lot of open mics on instagram i said look y'all i know i know you're tired and I, I know it's exhausting and I know it's frustrating, but I was like, rest, rest. This is a marathon. This is not yeah. a charge, you know, like this is a marathon. Intention is huge. Um, like you said, going out with the intention, the intention of giving back, the intention of helping, 
the intention of breaking or noticing a bias and correcting it um, in, inwardly. Um, and then going out if you're feeling down and going out and helping, that's the biggest thing that you can do to shift your perspective. I completely agree with you. Um, giving back and just volunteering and helping, seeing what's out there is just a huge way to shift your perspective very, very quickly. And your prediction, I love it. And five to 10 years, I agree with you. Um, we're rebalancing right now. And you're right, the people that have given so much um, of their time to these causes, and they're tired. And what's happening now, and I see it too, is people are kind of taking up so they can rest, and then it's kind of like balancing it out. So I love that, and I'm very hopeful um, for the future. How can people help your cause, the guerrilla poets, the the um, juvenile detention. I mean, I'm already like, I need to talk to you about signing up to help. <laughs> yeah, so we um, always take volunteers. I will say this, there are some places like lockdown facilities that we go that like other volunteers can't go. So there are places that they are, volunteers are more than welcome to come in. And then there are some places where you, you're, it's just a whole process and we have to really get to know somebody before we bring them in uh, to those areas and take them through the process. But there's there's lots of things. Right now we don't, we usually ask for art supplies for our art programs, but right now we're good on art supplies. But, you know, just check us out on social media. If we need anything, we'll ask. Normally, you know, we'll do a fundraiser. Like if anybody ever wants to be a sponsor, that's a huge help because we operate on a very low budget. Um, compared to other nonprofits. We're very grassroots, but it gives us the freedom to be able to do as much as we do. Uh, but yeah, um, coming in, helping with workshops, helping um, with programming, uh, even, even if anybody out there is like a good administrator, like helping, helping type stuff up, like that nonprofits need that too. That that would make a huge impact on the nonprofit and help them do what they do. If uh, people had more interns and things like that, we have a a sponsor who did an um, art program with our teens, where like they do art cards, and he sponsored five dollars a card, and then um, whichever card he picks, the winner gets like twenty dollars too. So like, but the teens get that money. You know, so like, that's awesome. And then he'll match uh, the money as a donation to Gorilla Poets, which is an awesome creative way to still be a donor, but also like influence the teens on a personal level. I feel like we could talk for hours and um, I just have so enjoyed this. I've got my own kind of coaching session with you today. So it's been amazing. Um, thank you so much for sharing your insights and just for being here and for being in the world and for helping so much. Um, it's amazing and I can't wait to maybe connect with you outside of this because I'm like, that's a girl I gotta know. <laughs> so thank you yes, so much. <laughs>